that to Google. Perfect. Here we got our main types of 3D printers. This M3D is an extrusion 3D printer, meaning we have a filament coming in and it's being extruded out in a pattern to build up your part. It is a cheaper alternative to the others, but it takes time to build, it takes more time to build your part. Now, stereolithography SLA printing is the resin printer. We actually have a resin printer I could show you guys in the lab. It uses light. It shines a beam of light to cure the resin at certain layers on a build plate, and then it pretty much lifts the part out of the resin by doing its light pattern to build each layer. And that can get into the thousands of microns small of resolution giving a nice just a I think I think it's a cleanest looking part. DLP is similar to another resin. All these are resin based. Oh SLN that's a, the metal printer so it's pretty much uses I don't want to say welding rods but it takes metal in pretty much welds a 3D part. It doesn't make any sense because if you weld metal it becomes a puddle. Somehow the black magic allows it to become a part. This thing's going away. Huh? This printer does not fit into any of these categories. I don't see extrusion on there. So we have these extrusion pretty much putting metal, plastic, force heating it up till it liquefies and forces it through a die at the the right size and whatever you want. So that's how noodles are made. If you like pasta. It's an extrusion process. More into the SLA printing. Wikipedia is your best friend. Never use the site. So it prints out a nicer part. I'd rather show you guys everything. It's easier to explain it in the lab. So I can actually show you and point everything out. Good images. Go ahead. Um, so do each one of these take some sort of resin have their own different um, coding that has to be done? The resin printer in my lab does not use G code, it uses its own job code, which is a modified G code. Now all the other printers, all extrusion printers use G code. So here's a great example right here. You have a vat of resin, and it needs to be in a, a light-controlled environment. So you see all these printers have uh, a tint that allows small amount of light in. In the room we have ours in, and we have an orange top to it, and we keep the lights off in that room all the time, unless you're in there starting <laughs> apart. And you see it pulls the part out. Now I originally thought this was a very quick method. Yes, it could be very quick to print this part, but for the parts that I was printing for even the smallest itsy bitsy thing it was taking three hours for something that was like a meter a millimeter cube or smaller. Depends how small you want your layers. Now this is the 3D printer that started the excitement for me. This is a powder 3D printer. The, I want to say it's the original, but I don't 
I think it's the oldest form of 3D printing. You have two chambers. You have your fill and your build plate. So this is about a couple of feet of pure sand, of pure powder. And then each layer, there's a, a squeegee that goes around, comes all the way to this side. The build plate would go down, and then the fill plate would come up, and the squeegee would push the sand onto the build plate. And then as the squeegee goes to the other side, there is a, a ink cartridge that a normal printer uses, but you bleed the ink through, and then you send a glue through it, and then it glues on, prints out the glue, like it would if it was printing out paper. And then it will repeat the process until you have built up a part. And then it's really messy because then you have a vat of sand that you have to carefully, archaeologically dig out your bone and then try to conserve some of the powder. Then you bring it to a separate machine that you use a compressed air and vacuum up the rest of the remaining. Now this is a very brittle process because sand is... You have to let it dry for a while. So you, I used to print the part and then come the next day to, ex, to uh, extract it from the build plate. And then you can put on some resin on the outside or a chemical that will harden the powder so it makes it more durable. So some of the more expensive machines, you have your build area, you just bring it right next door into the cleaning area. So here's another, here's a good picture. You have your, your fill and then your build. And you have your squeegee. And there's actually versions of it that actually prints out color as well as the glue. So you can have a colored part. Now if you've ever gone into Dr. Salivar's office, he has a blue and white piston looking thing. That was actually printed on the powder printer that we have here that doesn't work, unfortunately. I tried getting that thing working freshman year. This is the same exact printer that I was using in high school. Fortunately, I could not get it working, and the people who build it, it's a relic these days. So no one wants to service it anymore, and I guess we're just going to get rid of it, unfortunately. They also have versions of this printer with metal. So you have your metal powder. And then right here you have a laser, X watt laser that melts your metal powder into a part and then repeats the same process. So those are the three I'll be going over. Now let's talk about films. Cool thing. So someone just yelled out Ninja Flex. That's an awesome material. So here is PLA, normal PLA. That's what I have here. The biodegradable plastics, cheap. So this website actually gives you recommendations. Keep your heat in this boundary. Have your bed temp this temperature, and then use. 3D printing tape. Now, people may call this a different name. This is, people call this painter's tape. It's a lie. This is all around 3D printing tape. The best adhesion for 3D print. You have ABS, which is the harder plastic. It's more, it can take more than PLA. It's stronger. But of course, we don't want to go into strengths and materials behind this stuff. ABS is not more flexible, it's more rigid. No, then we have nylon. Nylon's even more stronger. Say that loosely because I don't want Salvar to come in here and give you a lecture on what strong or strength means. 
PET, this is the, we're getting to more of the flexible filaments. No, the TPE is the flexible filament. This is NinjaFlex. So the cool thing about NinjaFlex is you could print your part out normally, and then you could take it out, and you could bend it in all sorts of directions. We used to have NinjaFlex in the machine shop printer that went to the car team that doesn't work anymore. Haha. Uh -huh. I didn't say that. Uh, and we're coming down here. We have more of the composite. Now, this is my favorite that I've always wanted to try. This is wood filament. This is PLA with sawdust in it. This thing, when this thing prints, it smells like you're cutting wood or you're etching wood. And then when it comes out, it feels like wood. And now you have conductive filaments. Say you want to make a part and send electricity through it. You have ceramic. You got carbon fiber. So they probably do. There's someone out there who probably has bamboo. Yeah, why not make it? We'll go over. So there's exactly there's people who print out chocolate, print out food. There's probably a meat one. They put ground beef in one end and prints out a burger. That's probably what they use in McDonald's. <laughs> exactly. In China, they actually have this machine that 3D prints a building out of concrete. And this can create a building in a day, I believe. The nozzle's about yay big, though, and it goes, does its thing. So this is what it looks like. This is what they are using. It's something with a track and there's two big arms that extend and does this thing black magic once again. It is a claw game. So the carbon fiber filament has strands of carbon fiber all diced down to a very fine powder form. And it's mixed into the PLA in the extrusion uh, bucket. You pour everything in a bucket and then it extrudes out into the wire. Here's steel. Little bits of steel in your PLA. Magnetic PLA. Magnets mashed up thrown in your PLA. Here's another flexible material. Gel with felt foam. <laughs> I don't think it's the fuzz felt. I think I don't know. Let's read into it. It's a flexible. It's made. It's not felt. It's it's a rubber. It's very porous. Why well, go into that? PLA. For some reason, likes water, likes to bring in water. So sometimes when you print with PLA, you'll have defects within your filaments. So what some people do is they will bake their filaments for 20 minutes in an oven at 100 some degrees just to get the defects to come out of your material. Pretty much. Polycarbonate, it's more clear materials. High impact plastic. More strength and material stuff. Here's a make a hard hat. Print out a hard hat. Now there's even a titanium filament. So there's actually a titanium printer. In the, in the research park, only back behind near Palm Beach County School of uh, 
college back there. You get filaments in all different sizes. Nozzles can come all the way to 0.1 millimeter, even smaller. In fact, I'll show you when we go to. We're going to take a field trip to my lab because now I want to show all you guys this stuff. We have really fine nozzles. A finer nozzle allows you to have a smaller. Uh, layer thickness allowing to have a nicer surface finish now let's ask questions questions and when something about 3d printer really bugs them they want to ask and find out i know there's some that um that goes up and down versus the nozzle going up and down in the other direction correct that has a resistance to the uh <laughs> no Honestly, no. You have, I never like, I want your part, when I think of that, I'd rather have my part stationary and you have your tool going all over. But when you start introducing your part moving, you have to worry about if you want to go into engineering aspects. The further away from an axle, from a, a pivot point, you create a larger moment, correct? Larger moment could equal failure of a part. It could detach from the base. But honestly, you never get to that height with these printers, so it's really not an issue. Questions, questions, concerns. Yes, you could print guns on this. If I were hypothetically a good college kid and I wanted a 3D printer of reasonable quality uh, that didn't cost too much money, is there any model? That Perfect. I actually wanted to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants a 3D printer. Now, what do you want to do? This M3D is 350 bucks. It comes in its cube, and you can plug it in and print right away. Now, there are the do-it-yourselfer machines, and you could get big. You get make them yourself. It comes in a kit, but you have to assemble it. Assembling takes time, and if you don't know what you're doing, you can mess up. Things can be loose, and I can actually hear loose going. It's the resin printer? <laughs> As if you want resin. Yes, yeah, so you can build your own little mini quadcopter. Somehow this turned into buy that printer, but it's not buy that printer. Now, resin printers, yes. They're the most expensive printers out there because they're expensive in money and time. You print out your part, and it comes out gooey, gooey and mushy. You still have to cure your part even more, so you have to clean it off in a solution, it's usually a chemical, and then put in another chemical to harden your resin so it gets to that final stage of rock solid blah. This is injection. Bad example. Go to live, I'll show you some parts. Uh, so for that printer, which is on a it's a resin printer, costs 100 bucks. There probably need to be another step there after. No, there's 50 steps with just post everything. 
So the best surface finish. It is a strong. It's resin. It's stronger. Uh, what else? Keeps your tolerance. It doesn't have a shrinkage <laughs> because it's a thermo set. If you want to go into the material properties of a thermo set versus thermoplastic, thermoplastics will shrink. Thermo sets do not. But once you make something in a thermo set, it's it. You can't remelt it. You have to smash it up and throw it out. So. This is one of the printers companies that we got. It's a G Tech. And we come down here and look at these. These are big 3D printers for 200 bucks. This M3D is 350 and prints out a build area of realistically 4 inch cube. These things can print out. 9 inch cubes even higher, 12 inch cubes even higher, but the catch is you have to assemble it. Then you have to go through the 8 hour process of, a process of zeroing everything, getting your, your uh, tolerances to how you want it, tightening your belts, make sure everything's lined up. These, these are the do-it-yourself ones? These are the do-it-yourself ones. Do yeah. So this is the exact model that we got. It has one nozzle, but inserts two different filaments so you can get this. You can be as artsy-fartsy as you want. You can get this. This one is, I want to say, 7 by 6 by 7. Pulling numbers out of my butt. <laughs> if you got the money. Yeah. I charge everyone. But notice, everyone, the cool thing these days is to have dual extruder. Dual extruder for 340 bucks. This thing is 350 bucks. Single extruder. 340 bucks. Double extruder. Ding ding ding. Ding 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 ding. Ding 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 ding. But here's the once again, the more expensive printers, yes, they come, but they're already tested and they've already made sure they print something before they leave the plant the plant and they box up and ship it to you. That's why they're more expensive. You just pull out. You don't have to put them together. They're more easy plug and play. But these takes time. It took me it takes like three days to put these things together with my with me working the lead. Usually around maybe a beginner will take seven hours. I'm getting quicker. I put the new one together in about five. This brand actually gave you more parts, more extra nuts and bolts. Uh, the other printer brand that we got was missing bolts and gave us crappy bolts. The negative Chinese manufacturing. What else am I thinking about? Let's go see lab. Field trip. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm going to shut off the recording now. Thank you. And that all was 3D printing. See you next time.